Welcome everyone. My name is Daniel Harberts from the University of Bonn. I'm chairing the next talk in the section control theory and optimization. And I have the pleasure to announce Marius Tusnak from Bordeaux. Please leave your questions on the Discord server. If time permits at the end, I can read them out, but if not, Marius will take care of them later. The title of the talk is Reachable States for Infinite Dimensional Linear Systems, Old and New. Please. Thank you very much. So I'm very happy to have the opportunity to present uh, my results um, uh, in this um, very prestigious uh, uh, conference. Uh, and uh, I will try to, um, uh, to describe uh, some advances which uh, uh, took place in, a, in an area which was very active during the, the last year. Uh, this um, area concerning uh, the determination of the reachable states for uh, uh, systems described by partial differential equations. The subject has been um, initiated, uh, I would say, 50 years ago uh, in the case of um, uh, the heat equation, for instance, but uh, quite a significant progress uh, has been obtained in the last uh, uh, four years. The outline of uh, my talk uh, is uh, on this uh, slide, uh, where I begin with uh, some uh, background, trying to make uh, the talk uh, uh, understandable by an audience as large as, as possible. Uh, and then I will go to the notion of reachable space first in an abstract setting. And then I will make um, things uh, more precise in a case of um, interest, and which is practically the only interesting case uh, in which we are able to give a complete description of this space. Finally, I will uh, discuss um, uh, the robustness of uh, this concept uh, with respect to, to perturbation first. Uh, in an abstract setting, and then again in the precise case of the wave equation, of the heat equation, sorry, uh, uh, in one space dimension, dimensions. So the general context is um, uh, given by um, uh, a class of, uh, of systems, of dynamical systems, which are called well post linear time invariant control systems. Quite a long name. Uh, for a concept uh, which is uh, described by two families of operators. So it's not necessarily the most standard descriptions. I will immediately uh, make the connection with a more standard one. So uh, the description I um, take uh, as um, a departure point is uh, the description by two families of operator, capital T uh, and capital Phi, uh, Phi. Uh, the family capital T is a C0 semigroup of operators on a Hilbert space capital X, which is called the state space. Uh, so what is a C0 semigroup of operators? It's a family of operators having the property that for each instant T, the operator capital T and X T is linear and bounded on X. And then uh, it needs to be uh, the identity uh, for uh, small t equal to zero, has to satisfy the semigroup property and the property of strong continuity at t equal to zero. Roughly speaking, this is the operator which associates, uh, the family of operators which associate to an initial state of our system, uh, the state at the instant small t, when there is no other input than the initial data. Uh, the second family of operators, uh, it's capital Phi and XT. Uh, and uh, this operator, capital Phi index T, is the map from the input function to the state of instant T when uh, the initial state is taken equal to zero. Obviously, these two uh, operators need to be uh, related by a property which is called composition property, which is not, nothing else but an expression of causality and which this very complicated formula, which uh, makes uh, 
uh, appearing uh, the concatenation at instant tau says nothing else that uh, when we have we want to see the effect of the concatenation of two signals we can begin also of course from zero and see what happened at instant tau plus t but we can also begin from tau then at instant tau we'll have an initial data and we have to take in consideration both the influence of this initial data which will be phi tau u in this case and of course uh, the the new um, uh, the new control signal so I will not insist uh, particularly on this. I have a picture, but I'm not sure it's very, uh, very important. Uh, now, I already mentioned what a C0 semigroup is. Uh, in order to give an alternative description of a well-posed linear system, uh, which is um, uh, quite, um, uh, quite standard in system theory, I need to introduce the notion of a generator which is the, the space of those uh, Z in the state space capital X, such that this limit uh, exists. Uh, and uh, then we have uh, the uh, uh, generator, which is the operator, which associates to Z uh, the value of uh, this distance limit. So I introduce this notion because in order to introduce the second ingredient uh, of the alternative description of a well-posed system, I need an extrapolation space, which is called X minus one, and which is the compl completion of X with respect to a weaker norm, which is uh, the norm of beta I minus A minus one Z, where beta is an element, an arbitrary one in the resolvent set of A. So for many examples, uh, this uh, space X minus one is not necessary. We can take op control operators which are bounded, but generally speaking, the control operator, which I will define immediately, takes values in this larger space X minus one. Uh, so the general representation theorem for linear time invariant system, which is due to Salomon and to Weiss, uh, says, that uh, if I have a well-posed linear time invariant control system with state space X and control space U, then there exists a unique operator B, which is linear and bounded from U to X minus one. So not to X in general, but this may happen uh, such that um, uh, the uh, input map phi tau is described by a, a convolution, which uh, most of you uh, uh, remark, uh, that appears is what appears in the theory of linear differential equations in the variation of constant formula. In other words, uh, in fact, uh, the operators capital T index small t and capital phi index small t describe the state trajectories of the system z dot is equal to a z plus b u with z of zero is equal to z zero. The only slightly complicated thing here is that B in general is not with values in X, needs to be taken with values in a larger larger space. I can now pass to the uh, main notions uh, in, in my talk, which are the notions of reachable space and um, of uh, controllability. The reachable space of a well-posed uh, linear time invariant control systems in the sense I have just defined is now nothing else than the range of phi tau. And then I am speaking about the reachable space at time tau. First, generally, this uh, space will depend on time uh, and it is not a closed subspace of X. If I look to the differential equation z dot is equal to a z plus b u, uh, sorry, uh, which I already uh, wrote on my previous uh, slide. What is the reachable space? Is the set described by z of tau when z zero is equal to zero and u is free to live in the admissible control function space. More algebraically, this is just the range of phi tau. So for most uh, infinite dimensional dynamical system, infinite dimensional dynamical system means that the space capital X 
is not a finite dimensional one. Uh, for most of them, we are unable to say anything about uh, uh, this, uh, this space. Uh, however, we can say in a very general manner that this space can be endowed with a Hilbert space structure. Uh, when uh, uh, we define the norm uh, as a norm uh, transported from the space L2 of zero tau capital E. The problem is with such a norm, it's um, quite an implicit concept. Uh, oh, unbelievable, there is a phone, sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, the only situation where this uh, space uh, was uh, completely understood uh, till uh, several years ago uh, was a space where X and U are finite dimensional. And in this case, there is a famous theorem due to Rudolf Kalman from 1963, which says that this space uh, is um, the range of uh, the operator described by the matrix B, A, B, up to a power n minus one b. So we have a completely algebraic and precise description of uh, this space where we can already remark that it does not depend on tau, on time. This can seem um, against intuition uh, because roughly speaking, it is saying that what we are able to do in a very long time, we will be able to do also in a shorter one but uh, in fact, it's not really a paradox because what we should take into consideration uh, is that um, to do the same thing in a shorter time, you, we need a, a huge amount uh, of, of energy. Now the controllability. Uh, for infinite dimensional dynamical system, there are at least uh, three important types of controllability. Uh, these are exact controllability, which may, uh, means that the operator phi tau is onto. Uh, in other words, a system is said exactly controllable if starting from zero, you can reach in time tau any, any state. It is easily checked that this means that strand implies that uh, starting from any initial data, we can reach any final data uh, in time tau. The second type of controllability is the null controllability, which um, can be defined with the help of a reachable space uh, by the property that the range of phi tau contains the range of the semicolon. Uh, in fact, going back to the variation of constants formula applied to z dot is equal to a z plus b u, we see that this means that given any initial state, we can find a control which steers the system to zero in time Tau. Clearly, this is a concept weaker than the concept of exact controllability. Uh, and then we have the concept of approximate controllability, which uh, is defined by the property that the range of phi tau is dense in the state space capital X. It is easily checked that for finite dimensional uh, linear system, these three concepts are, uh, are equivalent and they do not depend on time. So this is why for finite dimensional system, we just say that it is controllable without specifying any type of controllability. Now, the, some uh, remarks on, on uh, the finite dimensional case and slightly beyond. Uh, so in the finite dimensional case, any system can be seen as a controllable one. Uh, to see that, uh, we can, uh, it suffices to restrict the generator uh, to the reachable space, and then uh, everything uh, uh, is continuous also on this um, smaller space. And of course, by definition, we get an exactly controllable system. This looks like a trivial uh, assertion, and it is one indeed uh, in the case of finite dimensional systems, but I insisted on uh, reminding it uh, because um, uh, it will be much more complicated and much more important to look to this property for infinite dimensional system. Uh, now, uh, the reachable space is a priori, the space of states which can be reached with uh, signals which are L2 in time with values in the control space. 
it turns out that for a finite dimensional system again, this space uh, coincides with a space obtained by very smooth uh, signals. This is a bit surprising, but it comes from the, uh, in fact, from the analyticity of solutions uh, of, um, of our um, uh, homogeneous differential equation. Uh, for finite dimensional system, it is not difficult to construct um, uh, systems, with, for instance, with a generator which is negative, uh, which are not exactly controllable, but which may be null controllable or an approximate controllable. Uh, so, in fact, we really see that um, these three notions are, are different uh, for infinite dimensional system. For these kind of systems, in general, when I restrict uh, <coughs> my system to the range of tau, there is no reason to have exact uh, controllability. And we will see an example um, um, quite, um, uh, quite quickly uh, on the next slides. Uh, so this is why um, it is important to define uh, a notion, a class of system uh, for which we can retrieve at least some of the properties uh, of uh, finite dimensional one, uh, if we want to develop analogs of uh, the very uh, developed theory of finite dimensional linear systems. Such a class could be the, the class of those systems which are null controllable uh, in arbitrarily um, small time. Uh, for this system, there is a result which goes back to Fattorini and Zeidman uh, from a uh, very long time ago. Uh, in, in the 70s or in the 80s. Uh, and uh, uh, this result says that uh, for a null controllable system, the range of phi tau again does not depend on time. Uh, so when I say null controllable, I mean null controllable in um, any time. Moreover, these spaces which have naturally a Hilbert space structures uh, have norms which are equivalent uh, for different times. Uh, and the equivalence constants depends, of course, on time. So algebraically, the space is is the same, but its norm it depends uh, depends on, on on time. So this is a very simple proof, which can be uh, maybe done in uh, in uh, and presented in in one slide. So uh, to do that, let me just show a picture, which is on the, on the next slide. So here. I have, uh, I assume that I have a state. So on the abscissa, I have time. On the ordinate, I have a state. Uh, saying that a state eta is reachable in time tau means that I can find a straight trajectory <coughs> W, which goes to zero and reaches eta at instant tau, and it leaves from, from zero. This is mean that it's in the range of uh, phi tau. Now, uh, I want to, sh to show that the same state can be reached in a smaller time. A way to do that is to first shift the trajectory to the left. Uh, and then uh, I, I obtain, of course, a, a course, a curve, which will reach my system in a time t smaller than tau. Here, the time is, uh, is equal to t. But of course, this red curve is not starting from zero, so I cannot say that um, uh, eta is a, a range of phi t with t smaller than tau. Now I, I try to write this, I cannot say it directly uh, in a more um, uh, precise uh, manner. So I have, uh, oh, okay, so it's a, the opposite, sorry. Uh, t is larger than tau, so w can be reached in time t. And I want to show that it will be reachable also in time tau. To do that, I first shift my trajectory and my control function to the left uh, by a time uh, which is t minus tau. Uh, and then I, I remark that eta is both w of at instant t and w tilde at instant tau. And w at instant tau, again, <coughs> let us say by the variation of constant formula, it will be uh, an initial state. The problem with the curve w tilde is that it doesn't pass by the origin for t equal to zero. So the, this eta will be some initial state, which I don't know, which is w tilde at zero, uh, to which I apply the semigroup plus phi tau u. 
what I did, did up to now is valid for any dynamical system. But now I use the fact that our system is um, null controllable at any time, which means in particular that the range of eta contains the range of eta uh, of t tau. So, which implies that this quantity, this sum, lies in the range of eta tau because t tau of w tilde of zero lies also in the range of eta tau by the null controllability property. So, if all the right hand side lies in the range of uh, 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 phi. Uh, phi tau, this means that eta is in the range of phi tau, which ends our proof. Uh, a consequence, a very simple one, which has been remarked by, uh, by Thomas Normand in 2019, is that uh, under the above assumptions, if I take inputs which lie in a slightly smaller space than L2, so which has the property that divided by square root of 2, they lie in L2, <coughs> then the reachable space by this smaller set of inputs is the same. Again, it just suffices to combine the previous proposition uh, uh, with uh, uh, just a simple construction in which I, I do, for instance, nothing, uh, a small time uh, interval uh, before tau. <coughs> so uh, these are some uh, abstract results, which up to now are valid either for any system or the most interesting ones for systems which are null controllable in any positive time. But to do interesting um, results, to, to do applications which speak, for instance, to the PDE community, uh, it is important to know what this reachable space is, at least for some um, uh, model problems. And uh, the one which has been uh, studied a lot within the last years uh, is um, the system described by the heat equation uh, with various boundary controls. I will first uh, look at um, the heat equations on the half line uh, on zero for x and zero infinity uh, with um, uh, control acting at the left end. So you can imagine that we have an infinite bar uh, which is um, heated by a heat flux U at T at X equal to zero. And we want to know what are the temperature distributions we can um, uh, obtain at instant tau in the semi-infinite rod. So my input to state map is phi tau of a few is equal to W at instant tau, which will be a function of X for, for each uh, positive tau. Uh, so here, this has to be proved, but I, I, I will skip all these details. This equation define a well-posed uh, linear time invariant system with state space L2 of zero infinity and with control space C. And uh, by uh, classical uh, formulas in partial differential equations, we have an expression of a semigroup, which I call T tau left, uh, left coming from the fact that by boundary condition, it's at the left end of our infinite rod, which is given by a Gaussian, but a Gaussian which is symmetrized with respect to, to, to zero. And um, we have also uh, a formula uh, for the uh, input map. So all of this is completely explicit in the term, in the term of these uh, uh, Gaussians and the uh, integral operators involving Gaussians. What do we know about this system? It is completely classical that this system is approximately controllable in any positive time. This can be, for instance, proved by a duality argument, which I don't um, uh, insist on. What is less evident in spite of the, of the extremely simplicity of the system is that uh, the system is never null controllable. And moreover, we have something very strong, which we will never see in finite dimension, is that the range of the input map and the range of the semigroup have an intersection which is formed only by the origin for every positive tau. Uh, so uh, this is uh, clearly uh, uh, implying the lack of null controllability, but uh, 
uh, clearly says also that even if I restrict myself to the reachable uh, space, which is zero, I will never have an, an exactly controllable system. So this can be proved, uh, for instance, using Hardy's uncertainty principle, uh, but uh, also other methods. And it has been generalized in several space dimensions for exterior problems by Escauriaza, Seregin, and Schwerak. And also from the viewpoint of the type of equation considered uh, by Darde and Hervedoza in a recent uh, work. <clears throat> Moreover, one can say that uh, the range of phi tau left depends on tau, uh, but uh, I will not explicitly write what this space is, although we know, but it's a bit complicated. I will satisfy myself to give explicitly the range of phi tau left restricted to those inputs which divided by square root of t are in L2. And uh, this, uh, 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 these uh, systems, um, uh, so these inputs have um, an image by phi tau left, which is what's called a Bergman space. Let me, uh, let me be a bit uh, more precise. So a priori, uh, the an element of the range of phi tau left uh, is a function defined on, on the real axis OX, uh, as it's a function of X. It turns out that a reachable function, it's much smoother and it can be extended to a function which is holomorphic in the set delta, which is the infinite sector contained between these two uh, yellow lines. Uh, and moreover, uh, it's a function which is square integrable with respect to a certain weight uh, denoted omega zero tau, so which depends on tau uh, here. So here it turns out that there is a result of Aikawa, Hayashi, and Saitok, which uses a theory of reproducing kernel spaces, uh, and which shows that the range of this map when restricted to functions which have the property they divided by square root of t via L2 with values in C, so in fact U is C here, uh, this range is given exactly by this, this space denoted by A2 of delta with the uh, weight omega zero tau, and this space is called a Bergman space. I will repeat uh, quite soon uh, this definition in a slightly more general context. So this is um, uh, a, a very interesting example. Uh, and for us, it was very useful, even if uh, we were not interested in the, uh, the semi-infinite road. Uh, the case which was um, of interest uh, during the last, um, uh, let's say, four years was um, the heat equation on an interval. So here, I have again a road which this time I'm hitting from both ends. And I, I, I take um, as uh, control boundary conditions, this time the temperatures at both ends, which are U0 and U pi. I could take uh, the flux, is something I will do immediately after, but I prefer to keep it here, the temperature, because this was the case which has been um, uh, intensively studied um, uh, during the last years. So our input space here will be U is equal to C2, and our state space will be a negative so we'll have space. This is a, just a technical, uh, uh, technical issue, which is not important for the remaining part of my talk. So our input map is a map which associates to a couple of control functions U0, U pi, the value of W at instant tau. And the question is again, which are the temperature distributions which I can achieve at instant tau, when my control functions u0, u pi are free to move uh, in the whole uh, L2 of uh, zero tau. To state the results uh, and the, the, the one which can be considered by now classical and the new ones, I, I need a bit of, um, of notation. Uh, but before that, uh, let me just mention uh, that uh, 
it is not difficult to check. This can be done by a truncation procedure, and it can be also found in classical PDE texts that a um, reachable state is necessarily extendable. A priori is a function defined on zero pi, but it can be extended to a function which is holomorphic in the interior uh, of this uh, um, red square, which is the set D uh, described analytically here. Of course, what we are interested in uh, uh, in control theory, it's uh, more likely uh, the opposite inclusion to, to find the largest possible subspaces of this range of tau, and uh, ideally give a complete characterization of, of range of tau. The first result goes to the original paper of Fatorini and Russell from 1971. And it says that if I take a function which is analytic in a horizontal strip S of width 2 pi, which contains my segment, so in something uh, like that, uh, and it satisfies a lot of uh, compatibility condition at 0 and at pi, then such a state can be reached. Uh, this is a result which uh, uh, was quite sharp in the methodology applied by Fatorini and Russell, uh, but which, of course, um, looks a bit um, uh, incomplete since uh, we are controlling at x equal to 0 and x equal to pi. There is no reason to be able to reach only functions which vanish at these two, pi, two, two points. Uh, the first result, which uh, one of the first results, maybe, uh, which um, got rid of this uh, restriction of vanishing at x equal to 0 and x equal to pi, was the result of Martin, Rosier, and Rouchon from 2016, which said that if I take a function which is holomorphic in a disk, disk strictly larger than this, uh, this set D, with no other condition, uh, then such a function can be reached in any time tau. Uh, this result has been uh, strongly improved by um, uh, Dervedoza and Dardet in uh, 2017. And they showed uh, that if you take a function which is holomorphic in an arbitrarily small neighborhood of this set D, then you can reach it in any time. Uh, the fact that this result uh, uh, involved arbitrary small regions uh, containing D obviously um, suggests that uh, the space um, of um, functions which can be reached should be a space of holomorphic functions defined on D only. And the first result in this direction uh, has been obtained by uh, Harman Kelly and myself in 2017 which um, says that um, the range of phi tau um, is sandwiched between two spaces of holomorphic functions defined on D. So these spaces are defined on the next slide. A2, already I mentioned, it was called a Bergman spaces, and E2 is a Hardy-Smirnov space. More precisely, the Hardy-Smirnov space E2 of omega is the space of functions which are holomorphic in omega, roughly speaking, and roughly speaking, which have a trace on the boundary, which is L2, uh, whereas the Berman space with some weight omega, small omega, in a set capital omega, is formed by those functions which are holomorphic in omega and which are L2 with respect to the surface measure, to the two-dimensional Lebesgue measure uh, in a capital omega. If the weight is equal, small omega is equal to one, when, then we just write A2 of omega. Uh, so these spaces do not coincide. So there is some, in general, so there is some room between this, these uh, two spaces in, uh, in, our, in our sandwich. To describe more recent result, I should, should introduce slightly more notation. I already introduced the infinite sector delta contained between these two, um, let's say, yellow lines. Uh, 
I take also it's symmetric with respect to the line x equal to pi over two, uh, so which is uh, pi minus delta, and which is uh, the set contained between the red lines. The intersection is the set D, which appeared uh, in uh, my previous uh, slide. And then I already introduced the weight omega zero delta, which I repeat here, which is exponential of real part of S2 over two delta, everything divided by delta, and uh, the symmetric uh, weight with respect to the line x equal to pi over two. And then we define, define a space x delta, which is the sum of these two weighted Berman, Berman space. On this space, we can naturally define, of course, uh, a norm, which is the norm of the uh, sum of uh, uh, two Hilbert spaces. And it will be formed by functions, which are obviously defined only on, on D. The more, most uh, recent, uh, so this sum is denoted by X delta. So X delta is the sum of these two weighted Berman spaces. Uh, the most recent results say first that for each tau, the range of E tau is exactly equal uh, to this sum of uh, two Hilbert spaces. And it has been a result which I have obtained with, uh, with uh, Kelly and Norman in 2019. Uh, then in the same paper, we remark that in fact, this space X tau does not depend on tau, on as long as tau is strictly positive. And in fact, it coincides with the sum of the two Berman spaces with weight equal to one. Uh, so uh, putting the first two results together, we obtain that the range of tau is equal to the sum of the Berman space in delta and in its symmetric delta tilde, which is P minus, minus delta. And this holds for every positive uh, uh, Tau. In fact, delta has no longer a role uh, uh, here. Uh, and then a very natural question, which is a complex analytic questions and, and which has been uh, solved in a very interesting paper of Hartmann and Orsoni in 2020 says that the sum of these two spaces is exactly th the Berman space in the intersection, so in, in D. Uh, so this can be seen as a um, a problem of what's called in complex analysis separation of singularities. You take a function which is holomorphic in D, but also in the Berman space of D, and you are able to decompose it uh, in, uh, in the sum of, of, um, uh, of two uh, uh, functions, each one uh, holomorphic and uh, integrable in a much larger set. So these are. This is the first uh, examples of interest where we have a very precise and finally very simple characterization of, of the reachable space. Just two words uh, concerning uh, uh, the proof and the connections with the results I mentioned for the, for the half line. Uh, so in fact, what happens here uh, is that uh, we um, remark uh, by what's called in PD the method or, of images, that the input map phi tau u evaluated at some point x, x being in the interval zero pi, it's equal to the sum of the contribution of the left control and of the control at the right. This is obvious because our problem is linear. Uh, but then what's more interesting that each one of these contribution can be separated in a contribution uh, which is nothing else but the, the solution on the half line, corresponding half line, plus uh, the shifts of this contribution, the shifts uh, by M. So I have up to phi tau left u zero if x is a solution on zero infinity. Uh, phi tau right a few pi will be a solution on minus infinity pi. But then to correct my boundary condition, I need a lot of other terms, but which can be described again by the heat kernel, uh, by in fact, by shifted heat kernels. And when you shift heat kernels, for instance, in the formula of K0 tilde here, you see that you have some M's 
and x plus 2 m p m pi when m is not zero becomes very large when m increases. So we have a series which is converging and is converging to something which is small, at least when the time is small. Uh, and so, in fact, we don't apply this to u by to square root of t u because we want to use the result of uh, uh, Aikawa uh, Saito, Saito uh, which gives me a complete description of uh, of um, uh, phi tau, uh, the range of phi tau left, of phi tau right. And doing this, uh, in fact, we have just to show uh, that um, the contribution of the other term is neglectable, which requires uh, estimates. Um, but uh, it's uh, not uh, extremely difficult. And then we use the other remark that for our problem on the, on the segment, which is null controllable, this is the result of uh, uh, Fattorini and Russell, uh, introducing the square root of t is not changing the reachable set. So if we are able to describe the set reachable by inputs of the form square root of t times u, we have the whole reachable space, but here I use controllability. And then I obtain, indeed, that in fact is the range of phi tau left plus the range of phi tau right, which is exactly the x tau which appears uh, in, our, in our result. Uh, the corresponding results in several space dimensions are not really existing. The only thing we have is when omega is um, a ball in Rn and the control acts on the whole boundary, we have a description, not exactly a description, but we have a quite large subspace uh, uh, of uh, the range of phi tau, uh, which uh, says, roughly speaking, that um, any neighborhood of the, uh, any function which is holomorphic in a neighborhood of the n dimensional analog of the set D from one space dimension can be reached uh, in, uh, in time uh, tau. I will end up with, uh, uh, by discussing uh, the robustness of a reachable space with respect to perturbations. Uh, so uh, this is important because as you see, for the heat equation, we really use a lot the specific form of the fundamental solution of, of the heat curve. So uh, the question is, what can we do um, by perturbations, for perturbations where such information is no longer available. Knowing the reachable space allows you to describe admissible perturbations. So we have two results which have been obtained in a recent work with Hervé Doza uh, and uh, uh, Kevin Lebalch, and where we show that if uh, the perturbation of the generator is small in this space in, as a linear operator on the range of phi tau, on the reachable space, then the reachable space does not change. We have also a secondary result where um, uh, this um, smallness assumption is uh, assumed by a regularity assumption, which is here. Uh, so it involves the state space uh, in uh, the range of phi tau, uh, and also uh, with a kind of unique continuation property. And in this case, we don't have smallness, but we need these two properties. The main ingredients of this, of this um, uh, result uh, is the fact that um, when you have a null, and which is a functional analytic fact, uh, general, not for the specific equation, uh, is that when we have a system which is null controllable in any time, and um, we restrict it to the reachable space, then the restriction of the semigroup to this reachable space, which a priori has a much stronger topology, is still uh, a C0 semigroup. So this is a basic ingredient which allows us uh, to do a perturbation theory in a way which is quite similar to perturbation theory for exact controllable system, which is a quite well understood subject. So, but the main ingredient is this uh, uh, strong continuity property of the generator when restricted to the reachable space. The applications of that, if I take the heat equation, for instance, with um, uh, Neumann boundary condition here. I know what the reachable space is. Again, it will be a space of holomorphic functions in this uh, D, which will be slightly smaller than uh, the Berman space, which I uh, previously mentioned. Uh, then if I take this, um, 
original problem. So this is my original problem. I perturb it by adding a potential now. If this potential is an analytic function in D, and which is small in the W1 infinity norm, so it's small together, which is derivative in D besides being analytic, then the uh, reachable space is not affected by the presence of such a perturbation. Uh, the second application uh, is um, uh, of integral type. And this was one of the motivations of our work, such work. So I, I take a kernel, I perturb by a kernel operator, which of course is very regularizing under appropriate assumptions. And we are able to show that in this case, again, the reachable space is not affected, provided by this k is analytic with respect to x in the set d again, and this times without smallness uh, condition. So this is a result which uh, somehow motivated the example, which motivated us. And it improves um, a lot what, um, what is known for uh, this, uh, uh, this type of perturbations. Let me now uh, end up uh, with uh, concluding remarks. Uh, and roughly speaking with some questions which would be interesting to study. Of course, much has to be done for the several, several space dimension. For the case where the contra acts in, inside the domain, there are some open questions, but uh, we think that uh, they are uh, tractable quite easily with, um, with the methodology we propose. Uh, to tackle nonlinear heat equations, we are able to get, have results for uh, polynomial nonlinearities, but not yet for uh, equations involving uh, derivatives and uh, like viscous borders, and also to study uh, in several space dimensions. So I think I'm at the end of my talk, and I am very happy to uh, answer to any questions. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you very much for this uh, rich and fascinating talk. Uh, I looked at Discord, I can see no questions, uh, but uh, they might be asked there later. Um, so I think I can close the section for today and uh, thank our speaker again. Thank you very much. Th thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.